Grace, mercy, and peace be unto the entire world uh, this morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to Rise and Shine. I'm your host, Vivian, uh, coming to you live from out of Toronto, Canada. Uh, we bless the Lord this morning. Give God praise this morning, yes. At the midnight cry, there will be a midnight cry. The bride of Christ shall rise. Church, get ready. Church, get ready. Ah, uh, yes. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God this morning. Ah, uh, yes, we want to give him praise. Lord to God. Uh, yes. The trumpet will sound one of these days. The eastern sky will spill it. Yes. And the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords will descend. Uh, we bless the Lord this morning. Rise and shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you this morning. Good morning to the entire world. Uh, I'm your host, Vivian, uh, with Michelle this morning. Uh, glory to God. We just want to give God praise, and we want to give him glory this morning. Good morning. Uh, glory to God. Uh, yes, a mighty Russian wind. It's getting closer. Ah, uh, glory to God. We're closer than we've ever been. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God this morning. We can almost hear it this morning. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God this morning. At the midnight cry this midnight morning, cry. we are going home. It's going home time. Going home. Ah, oh, yes, we give oh, God yes. praise this morning and we give him glory. We are looking around us. Prophecy is being fulfilled. I yes. They are being fulfilled, that which was spoken even before we got here. The signs of the times, uh, yes, the Bible tells us that we will see them. They are appearing everywhere around us, glory to God, yes. Uh, yes, he who has an ear, let him hear. It's time to go get my children, yes. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because at the midnight cry, glory to God. The bride of Christ, the church. Ah, oh, glory to God, yes. Church, get ready. Jesus is about to step out, glory to God, hallelujah. To call his children. We bless him this morning. When Christ shall rise. To meet him in the air. Ah, yes. We bless him this morning. Ah, hallelujah. Those who remain. Yes. Shall be quickly changed. Oh, glory to God, yes. At the midnight cry, Minister Mitch, there is going to be a crying. Oh, glory to God, hallelujah. He is coming again. Behold, I come quickly. Oh, glory to God, yes. We look around us, yes. Ah, uh, prophecy is being fulfilled right before our eyes, yeah. The signs of the old times, hallelujah. 
They are appearing everywhere. Whether you're in Jamaica, Africa, England, it's, yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Saying, go get my children now. Go get them. Go get them. Go get them. At the midnight cry, we are going home. The bride, the bride of Christ, which is the church. Oh, glory to God. Yes. Church, be ready. Uh, yes, Jesus is about to. Yes. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless him this morning. The dead in Christ shall rise to meet him. To meet him in the air. Uh, we bless the Lord this morning. Uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, we bless him this morning. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Ah, uh, yes. Hallelujah. The twinkling of an eye. At the midnight cry. He's coming back. He is coming back. Yeah, he is. He is coming back. He is coming back. There will be weeping and wailing and gashing of teeth. Uh, hallelujah. He is about to step out. Ah, uh, yes, which we are this morning. Ah, uh, yes, those who are asleep shall rise to meet him in the air. Glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We give him praise. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. We're going to be changed. We're going to be changed. At the midnight cry. At the midnight cry. Even so, come, Lord. We will see him face to face. We'll be going home. We will be going home. It is home time. Glory to God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We bless him this morning. We glorify him this morning. We exalt him uh, this morning because he is great and greatly to be praised, worthy to be exalted, worthy to be magnified, worthy uh, to be glorified. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God this morning. Hallelujah to the all-powerful God this morning. Hallelujah to the ever-present God this morning. Hallelujah to the King of all kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah to the sovereign eternal God this this morning the God who sits high and look low this morning we bless on him this morning we glorify him this morning we shabak him this morning we yada him this morning oh my God because he is great and greatly to be praised worthy uh, to be exalted worthy to be magnified we worship and we adore him this morning because uh, yes he is the giver of our lives and the sustainer of it this morning uh, glory to God he's the lifter up of our head this morning he is our way maker. He is our miracle working God. He is a God that is more than enough this morning. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord this morning. How excellent is our God in all the earth. Let the earth rejoice and be glad in it this morning. Oh, glory to God. We lift our voice and we yada him. We lift our voice and we shabak him. We lift our voice this morning and we say, 
You are a good God. You are an awesome God. You are our shepherd. You are our shield and our hiding place. Mighty God, you are a healer. Uh, you are a restorer. Oh, glory to God this morning. We are excited. Oh, glory to God this morning. We come to give you thanks and we come to give you praise and we come to give you glory this morning. Mighty God, for when we think about the goodness of Jesus, hallelujah, and all that you've done for us this morning, our soul cries out. Thank you, Lord, for saving. Thank you for delivering. We thank you, uh, glory to God, this morning for the shed blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My God, this morning, uh, the blood of Yeshua, the blood which was drawn from Emmanuel's vein. My God, we thank you for every drop of blood, oh, glory to God, this morning, which was shed for the remissions of our sins. We thank you this morning uh, that you who knew no sin uh, took upon yourself our sin. It was heavy. It was weighty, but you took it upon yourself. Uh, glory to God this morning. We recognize that you, uh, no one killed you, but you laid down uh, your life. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah uh, to the Lamb of God this morning. Uh, yes, and that's why this morning we can stand and we can say, Minister Mitch, that we have been redeemed. Uh, glory to God from out of the course of the law this morning, uh, that we've been bought with a price, my God, uh, in the name of Jesus this morning. And we thank you. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for strength. We thank you for joy. Uh, glory to God. We thank you for this awesome day, my God, the fourth day in the month of April. My God, we thank you that you chose to woke us up this morning. Uh, we thank you this morning that we on Real Talk, God, we thank you that you spoke to us this morning, my God, in, the, in a, such a timely manner. My good God Almighty, we heard you loud and clear uh, this morning. Uh, yes, behold, you stand at the door and you're knocking. Uh, glory to God. Yes, prepare ye the way. I am coming to announce to mankind. Uh, prepare to meet your maker. Prepare to give an account. Uh, glory to God, because we will have to give an account. Uh, glory to God to the years that he has loaned us. Uh, glory to God. Yes, uh, uh, the day of judgment is fast approaching. Uh, yes, the signs of the times of the coming of the Lord is upon us. Uh, glory to God. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. You might be saying, uh, yes, I hear Jesus coming from my eyes. Damn and me. Well, guess what? He is coming. Uh, glory to God. Church, church, church. Uh, it's not about getting ready. We got to be ready. Uh, glory to God in the name of Jesus. So this morning, Father, we thank you for the blood. Uh, yes, we release you, Holy Spirit, right now to speak through us. Almighty God, speak to somebody. Holy Spirit, do that which only you can do today. Let every man who has a here ear hear what the spirit of the lord is saying to us this morning uh, we bless the lord this morning and we glorify him this morning and we exalt him this morning because he is indeed a good God. He is an awesome God. He is the all-powerful God. Once again, on behalf of uh, Michelle and myself this morning and the entire Real Talk family, uh, we welcome you to our Monday morning devotion. Trust that you're up and thankful this morning, embracing it in all its fullness. Good morning uh, to the entire globe, uh, wherever you're watching us from, uh, whether it be now, whether it be later on. Uh, for those of you who are on chat, all protocols be established. Uh, glory to God for those of you behind the scenes. God bless you and your entire household. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto each and every one of you. Nothing lacking, nothing broken. We're here this morning to serve you uh, with clean hands and a pure heart and a right motive. Uh, God bless you. Welcome to our series, uh, The Journey to the Cross. I don't know how uh, Minister Mitch is going to go based on our devotion this morning. Uh, glory to God. Yes, uh, we got to sound the alarm. We bless the Lord, but we'll follow uh, the leading of the Holy Spirit as he gives us uh, and goes before us this morning. Uh, go ahead, woman of God. You're looking beautiful as ever. Uh, glory to God. I'm sure people must be wondering, my God, they don't look like they sleep. Look at them. Uh, glory to God. But it takes a lot. Uh, yes, before we turn on the lights <laughs> and the camera, uh, mighty God, we say it's time to serve. Uh, go ahead, woman of God. Good morning to you, Minister Nash. Good morning, good morning to those on chat. Good morning to all real talkers. Good morning to those who will just pass by. Good morning to those who even don't want to pass by, but yet looking to see what's happening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The word of God declares, he said, no man, not the time, nor the hour, 
when the son of man will appear so we just gotta be ready and stay ready you know based on this morning's gathering you know i was getting ready minister nash you know and i was meditating and you know when i getting ready they are talking to god i said like well what i going what what will i really say you know you know because based on the devotions you know that is the way you want us to go and then i still went right back it still ties in to what we are studying so while i was there you know i start getting the download so that's why i tell people i always write it whether it's short whether it's long i will write you know mary represents an earthen vessel that stayed prepared to be used by god how many of us will allow ourselves to stay prepared what are we doing to make sure that when the lord looks down and need someone to be used. We are just waiting for him to handpick us for his divine purpose. So which means when God looked down and saw Mary, Minister Nash, Mary was just not just get, getting ready. She was already prepared and waiting. So she was like, here am I, use me. So she was rushing. The preparation was already set. The table was already prepared. So when God was ready to dine, all he had to do was sit and eat. The utensils were already there. The food was already there. He had to just eat. He had to just take part of the meal. And that is what Mary represent. Knowing with us, we, the nowadays believers, can we say the same thing? Is our life representing being prepared? Our conversation, the things we do, Yes, Mary was only human, but she never said that. Because based on reading the scripture, she was a virgin. So she didn't let the human part of her take control. She knew what she stand for in God. She knew who she belonged to. And yes, she was caught in but she still kept her posture. She still kept her character because she knew, look, I am more than my body. I am more than just meeting with somebody. I know my father's love. So even if I have a companion, I already know what love is about. So if he leaves to that tomorrow, I will be okay. Christ came to show us the way to be prepared. Will we continue like the scribes, the Pharisees, and even the Jews? Will we continue with their mindset? Are we going to freely yield or find excuses to support ways on how to stay in sin? We must change our ways. We must change our mindset. Whatever journey we are going on, if it is not of God, we got to stop and ask God to direct us. I will not say go back because going back is not an option. So wherever, wherever you are at right now, stand still, take into consideration your ways. If it doesn't match up, if it is not pleasing to God, then surrender to Jesus. Give your life to him. And if you say that you surrender to God, then you have to let go of the carnal mindset. You have to release the natural man and so to the spirit. That is the only way you shall reap eternal life.
You shall gain the kingdom blessings. You shall receive your crown. You shall hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. That is the only way. So we must walk after the spirit. So we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh, the sins of the world. If we walk after the spirit, we will please God. How many of us as believers can say truthfully, we are walking after the spirit. Oh, we are minding the things of the flesh. We're taking on the world's business. We're thinking about, um, God, what you could give me today? We're thinking about the tangible. So what about the intangible that we are warned about over and over? That intangible is called faith. Why can't we hold on to the intangible? Because we don't see doesn't mean that it's not there. Minister Nash, we can't see our thoughts. We can't touch them, but yet still, we hold on to them. We give place to our thoughts. So why we can't give place to our faith? We are quick to shun the idea of living for Jesus because it requires us to love and don't treat others wickedly. Love our very enemies. Don't render evil for evil. He asks us to forgive those who will offend us. Leave our sacrifice at the altar and make it right. Jesus stated, only the pure in heart shall see God. Holiness is still a requirement. Holiness is still a necessity. Holiness is still of importance. Holiness is the most vital thing in the life of a believer. Because if we are not pure, if we are not clean, if we are not holy, how shall we see God? He said, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. So if you are a believer in Christ and you don't have the desire for the things of God, then we know something is wrong. We must desire the things of God. We often think about temptation, but temptation only comes when we give place to the enemy, Minister Nash. We can't give place to the enemy. We can't give place to Satan. If we give place to him, we are allowing him to come in and ransack our life to wreak havoc on us. The only time Satan can do anything to us, he must get permission from God. Without permission, he is not granted any access to us, Minister Nash. Things are going to happen around us. For we live in a world where there is good and evil. We live in a world where there is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We live in a world where Satan, he is in control of. He is the father of the world. He is the father of lies. He is the father of deception. So if we as a believer are going to operate in deception, if Christ is not in us, because Christ can be in us, Minister Nash, if we're gonna operate in deception, we can't operate in deception. There are principles to the kingdom of God that we must follow. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, he said, then we're going to hear from heaven. Then he's going to heal our land. So what we understand from the principles, we 
got to give up in order to receive Minister Nash. We got to give up heresies. We got to give up false doctrine. We got to give up living in sin. We got to give up these things in order to receive the blessings of God, the richness of God. In order for us to live a fulfilled life, we must follow the instructions of the Almighty God. And now, as I God asks him to do something. Go down. Go down to Am Amalek and kill, destroy everything. It's a kill, puss, dog, rat. Kill everything, foul. No, leave nothing. Man, woman, child. Don't leave anything. But guess what? Saul went down. He saved the king. He took the best sheep. He took the best oxen. He took the finest this and the finest that. And when now he came to inquire of him, well, Saul God and tell him must do this and do that. He said, But I bring back that so I can do burnt offering. God no asked you for nothing. He said to destroy everything, destroy. He allowed a set of people to go. He said, go ahead. But God asked you. He didn't ask to separate nothing. He had asked to pull out nothing. He said, disobedience is worse than witchcraft. Partial obedience is still disobedience. You can't obey God halfway. Look at that young prophet in first kings chapter 13 disobedience he was something like saul he operated in partial obedience he gave the word to the king he gave the word to the older prophet but when the old prophet tell him oh an angel of the lord said come to me house to eat minister that is the same thing our bellies People vexed with Jacob. But Isa, he asked for it, he belly again. Some more times, it's food. The children of Israel, Minister Nash, our sin, our iniquity, we belly again. Because they're wondering, oh, you bring us here to eat manna. When we was in Egypt, Boy, we had the finest meat. We had the finest wine and the drink. And this is what you bring us here to eat. Simple things like these causes us to walk in sin, to walk in error with God. Simple things like these draw, away, draw us away from God. Because one minister Nash, we're not gonna start a contentment. We are a bunch of ungrateful beads when we're ready. We don't be thankful. The simple things are significant as much as the big things. It's if you be content in little, I will make you ruler over much. And many of us we don't have. God could give us. But if we show no gratitude, and I believe us not showing gratitude to God is a sin, is wickedness. Because when people don't give us Minister Nash, we open ourselves and we become angry. And we say, our oh, people are grateful. And we say, we now do this for nobody again. But how many times? God has done for us, and not even a thank you. But let God say, I'm giving you a care, boy, we cut down Minister Nash. And God uses Minister Nash to say, Sister Michelle, I don't know what is led on my heart to send a 50 US for you. Oh, without any money, what would she think that? 
You know, these are things we grumble. We ain't got it. But we ain't see the purpose of the 50. You don't have it. So be thankful. It is sin to not appreciate what God gives us. We got to learn to show gratitude. He said, in everything, give thanks. It is the will of God in Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter. We must be appreciative. Let us really think deeply Amen. about Christ's appearance. He had to come or as many would have been lost. The innocent will be abused. Nobody there to stand in the gap for them. Look at the woman who had to go to the unrighteous judge. Minister Nash had to press him until he gets fed up. And then he saw the cause why the woman kept, com kept coming to him. Christ came for the orphans who ain't have no father. Christ came for the rejects to be their friend. Christ came for those who have sorrow in their heart to give them the oil of joy. Christ showed up for those who need him. God already knows who will shun him. And there is a remedy for them. There is a remedy for evildoers. There is a remedy for the work cause of iniquity. He shall surely repair the wicked. The proud in heart, they shall be brought low. Let me look at Nebuchadnezzar. Let us see what walking in sin will cause us when we don't recognize that our entire being is God himself. In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our very existence. So why don't we understand that, especially us as believers? Because we can't tell sinners or those who choose not to live for God about the things of God, they will not understand. Light and darkness can mix. Darkness will never understand that comprehend light. But they better know when light shows up, darkness must move. Minister Nash, it doesn't matter how, but it got to go. Nebuchadnezzar, God allowed him to accomplish so much. But then he become pompous, Minister Nash, and knocking the chest. Look at all that I have done. Forgetting who caused it to be completed. What happened to him? He ended up with claws like bird. He ended up with he up on the body all covered up. He ended up eating grass. And Jew was his covering. Minister, now some of us can't even take a little cool breeze. So what if, and we got to understand, believer or non-believer, you walk in sin, there is a consequence. Mm -hmm. You live in sin, you eat the bread of sorrow. Whose fault is that? We want what we want. But then we don't want to bear the consequences, not petty penalty. My God. When you do good, there is a reward. You do bad, there is a reward. So are we going to take into thought? If we're going to do this thing the right way. We got to get it right. Many of us will say we want the good, but doing the good, there is still evil lurking behind the good that you know. Because you do it and you're grumbling. 
But when you do the right thing, there is a release. When you do the right thing, you don't care what they say. You don't care if they accept it or not. Mm. When you do the right thing, you know that you're walking in the ways that God wants you to walk. So let us respect the birth of Jesus. Do we really understand his birth? It's not about food and drinks as we have it pent up to be Minister Nash. My God. But with families at his birth. But do we ever use the time to come to him and say, thank you for coming. Thank you. Because without your appearance, without your existence, without your showing up, what would have become of me? What would become of us? Some of us would have gone innocently, Minister Nash. Some of us would have never had the opportunity to say, God have mercy. Because there are many people who think that they hold the law of God in their hands. God gave them the mandate. God trusted them to be your shepherd. But in the end, they hurt you. They make you feel like what you do. It ain't forgivable. But if God forgive them, why he ain't gonna forgive me? We got to understand that love, it breathes forgiveness. Love, it produces joy. Love, it causes you to embrace everybody. It removes pride. Love, it causes you to be selfless and not self fish. Love, it caused Christ to give up his life. Love, he walked through some stuff. He endured some stuff. He stomached some stuff. He spoke when needed to be. He only spoke when he needed to speak. Most time, you will hear him speak kingdom parables. And these parables, only those who walk with Christ will understand. The ungodly will not understand. So endure what you got to endure, but we got to get this thing right. God will not give us just like that. Because to whom much is given, much is required. What do you have to give to receive such excellent sacrifice? Where you're going to let go? Where you're going to cast off? Who you're going to come from amongst? We got to set our eyes on Jesus. We got to set our focus on him alone. We must stay alert in the spirit. Many a times, like we know this morning, we worry about our loved ones. But how much more will you worry? How much more will you force Christ on them? If they are to the edge of consent, then they can answer for them own selves. Redemption is for everybody. Salvation is for all. Christ don't handpick. He is no respecter of person. He don't handpick at all. He don't say, you Michelle, no. You go so. No, you Minister Nash. Mm -mm. You Michelle, come. Come, I have need of you. Minister Nash, come. I have use for you. You can attract people to me. Yes, the life that you live is now a testimony, a magnet to your souls. It will help restore to an extent that they know that God still moves, that God still heals, works and restores. He still redeems. He still brings us back. Christ does that. He brings us back. 
So what are we going to do today? We got to get serious. If you want to be in people's company, oh, long time you say Jesus has come, then walk away. Because you cannot force it. The thing is, with the 10 virgins, he said five were wise and five were foolish. The foolish one, they had knowledge of the appearance of the bridegroom. They knew. But sleep is what will kill a lot of us. Slumber is what will kill a lot of us. We slap full, we lack a desk, we're lazy. Let me be honest. It's no fun rising up early in the morning. It's a struggle. But nevertheless, not I, but God, your will be done. It will come a day when God will perfect us. Where we could just get up without worrying. But you must put in the effort. Because it's a choice. He gave us free will and he ain't taking it back. Yes. So whatever we do with that free will is up to us. Yes. It's either we walk with God or we walk away from him. And whatever the penalty is, we are held accountable. So let us not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever we saw, that shall we read. So if we as believers continue to sow to the flesh and say we are kingdom builders and we are kingdom workers and we are disciples and we are fishers of men, but yet still not even one soul, you can encourage in the kingdom something wrong. Draw back. Step back. Mm. God, what am I not doing? Oh, what am I doing? That is not allowing. What is it that is blocking my life from representing Christ? Why can't I be a replica of Christ? Why is it that I only speak it, but there is nothing to show? Help me, God. He going to help you, whether through scriptures, whether you listen to Minister Nash or whomever you listen to, he will answer. Yes. He said, come out from among them and be separated. Rated. And what has messed us up a lot of times, Minister Nash, we want to be loved. Hmm. And we don't even love ourselves. Why we want love? Because we got to love ourselves first in order to love people. Come on now. And then we are able to love God. Because many of us say we love God and we don't love the people that we see. Mm. And the word of God says, I will love you. If you don't love the people that you see, you ain't love help God. Us. Help us, Lord. Help us. So it's simple things that have us living in sin. It's simple things that have us hindered from going forth in God. It's simple things that kills our desire. Because what? We are not serious. But when you are serious, sometimes it might feel like the fire out in, but God is going to step in and he's going to set the fire ablaze. However, he got to fan it, he fan it. If you feel like that, you got to pour, pour in more oil, you're going to do that. But it depends on your level where you are at. He will give the grace. It doesn't matter how heavy the burden gets. He will strengthen you. For his grace is sufficient in times of weakness. What is your weakness today? What is your hindrance? What is that sin that is easily besetting you? It is time to lay it aside. It is time to release yourself of unnecessary burdens and live fully for God, Minister Nash. 
My God, my God, my God. Thank you so much, uh, Evangelist Michelle, for that. Yes, we are on a journey. And as if you've been listening to her uh, over the couple of days, we're taking you on this journey with us, uh, the journey to the cross, glory to God. And as she rightfully says, uh, it ties into our theme. Uh, we bless the name of the Lord. And this morning, we just want to give God thanks. Again, welcome to our Rise and Shine this morning. I'm just going to take it with this point, uh, glory to to God. Um, from the book of Amos, as the Lord has spoken to us this morning, and I feel, Minister Mitch, that I need to echo that this morning, uh, glory to God, because we are very complacent, uh, glory to God. As she rightfully said, uh, the coming of the Lord is near. Uh, many of us are saying, oh, well, we've been hearing that. As she said, from my idea, my knee, you know, me have 50 and all known can come, but he's coming. Uh, the word of the Lord says this, therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, my God of mercy. I am here this morning, uh, yes, as one crying in the wilderness this morning, prepare to meet your God. Prepare to meet your maker, uh, glory to God. Yes, death will not um, forfeit that from happening, uh, glory to God. You will still meet him and you got to prepare yourself, uh, glory to God. We got to understand the word of God in this text, Minister Michelle. Uh, it contains both a warning and a command. Uh, glory to God. Yes, a warning and a command. Amos chapter four, uh, glory to God, verses um, 11 to 13. But I just picked up the end part of it, a portion of it. Uh, glory to God. But you can read the entire chapter if you'd like. Michelle, there is a warning. God will not do something without the first warns. Uh, glory to God. Yes, we hear it all the time. Uh, God will not destroy a city without he first sends a prophet to warn them. We all hear many times, uh, glory to God, the watchman uh, who sits on the tower, uh, glory to God. If you see the sword coming and you do not warn the people, uh, glory to God, yes, and they're slain, their blood will be upon your shoulder, uh, glory to God. But if you warn them that, listen, prepare yourself, the sword is coming, minister to Mitch, and they do not take heed, then guess what? Uh, their blood will not be upon our shoulders. You rightfully said so. How long will we tell you about the coming of the Lord? How long are you going to hear repent? How long we are letting you know that the sword is coming? Uh, Jesus is coming. Uh, glory to God. So here uh, we bless the Lord. Uh, we see that there is both a warning and a command. Uh, glory to God. We are warned, uh, Minister Mich Michelle, uh, yes, that someday we must meet God. Minister Mitch, someday you will meet God. That's what the word says. Prepare to meet your maker. Prepare to meet your God. Uh, glory to God. We are going to meet God and we are commanded to prepare for that meeting. We bless the name of the Lord. Minister Mitch, before we came on live, we prepared ourselves to come on live. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord. We prepare ourselves uh, to go to the doctor. Uh, if your boss says, you know, we're going to have a staff meeting, we prepare ourselves for that meeting. So that is exactly what we need to do. We need to prepare to meet our God. Uh, glory to God. We bless the Lord. We've been commanded to do that. Uh, glory to God. And the thing about it is that we don't understand. Uh, God is the only one who knows all about us. We bless the Lord. He knows every word uh, we have spoken. He knows everything, uh, yes, that we have done, our thoughts, our uh, glory to God. He knows even our sinful lives, our uh, glory to God. And knowing all of this that he knows about you and I, he is saying to us this morning, prepare to meet me. Oh, prepare to meet your maker. Make preparation. It is a command and it's a warning. We bless the name of the Lord. Now, the prophet Amos, he was a herdsman, Minister Mitch, and he was in Judea when he was called by God to send out this warning. We bless the name of the Lord. 
And what we don't understand, Minister Mitch, people might look at us and say, oh, you know what? It's just Minister Mitch and Vivian. I don't have to listen to them. They don't have no this behind their name. God will lose simple people as he used uh, Amos, my God, this morning to get his message across. We bless the name of the Lord. The message for this morning, ask us who were in real talk this morning. Our glory to God, this is what came out of this morning prayer. Prepare to meet thy God. We bless the Lord. Oh, glory to God this morning. The thing about it is, we prepare for everything else, Minister Mitch. Minister Mitch, we prepare how we're going to take care of families. Our oh, glory to God. We prepare, even persons right now, they prepare for the retirement. I know somebody who already paid off for their burial spot, their casket, everything, made preparations for all of that. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord. We prepare, as I just said, our oh, glory to God for everything. Right now, Minister Mitch, if you heard that there's a storm that's headed uh, down in St. Kitts, you're going to make preparation for it. You're going to go and buy everything and paste and, and, you know, kneel down and board up what you need. You're making preparation. But why have we made preparation for everything else, but we have yet to make preparation for God for that meeting? That very important meeting, which is going to make a, which will be decided where would you will spend eternity. We spend time preparing for weddings, preparing for the birth of a child, uh, glory to God, but neglect the matter of preparing to meet your God. We understand this truth that the Bible says that we were born in sin and conceived in iniquity. And because of that, Minister Mitch, we have gone astray as soon as we were born. And from our mouths, we've spoken lies. That's Bible. The Bible says we have all sinned, uh, glory to God. Justin Trudeau sinned, your pastor sinned, I sinned. We've all sinned and have come short of the glory of God. But my question to us this morning, are you ready? Are you preparing? Uh, yes, to respond to the warning and the command. Be ready, be prepared for this meeting. Uh, the most important meeting in your life existing. And that is to meet your maker, to meet thy God. We bless the name of the Lord. One of the things I can understand, I can say to us this morning, we are not ready until some change, until changes have taken place, until some preparation has taken place, Minister Mitch. Jesus Christ himself made us a promise. He himself knew how important it was to prepare, Minister Mitch. He knew. Because before Jesus went away, he said this, I go to prepare a place for you. Yes, he's making preparation. Listen to this. He's making preparation for us, right? But yes, so we're not making preparation to meet him. My God. Heaven, Minister Mitch, is a prepared place. But guess what? It is only for prepared people. Oh, come on, somebody, we give God praise this morning. Heaven has already been prepared for us. <coughs> Heaven has already been prepared, Minister Mitch. But guess what, Minister Mitch? You and I must make preparation for heaven. Oh, come on, Jesus, have mercy. Because someday we must stand before the great God of heaven and earth. Someday we must stand before the God of the universe. 
Someday we must give an account. My question to us this morning, are you ready? Are you ready? We bless the name of the Lord. When we look at the Easter bunny or bunnies, you see them hopping and bouncing all over the place. Glory to God. That's what some of us are like in this time of the season, this Easter season. We're like some of those bunnies. Yeah. We hop out of the church on Easter Sunday. Oh, yeah. We come into the church, we hop into the church and we hear all the Easter messages being preached. Uh, we go to the Easter, um, you know, the children's program for Easter and all that stuff, Minister Mitch. And when everything is said and done, we turn our backs on God for the rest of the year. Oh yeah. But I wanna let us know in spite of all that, nevertheless, we must give an account to God for the way we handle this and every other responsibility that has been given to us. Because we will go before him. Many of us who have been in, in, in jail or had to go stand before the judge, Minister Mitch, we go before the judge of this world. And when the, the, the lawyer says, or the judge says, um, how do you plea? We lift our hands and we say, your honor, not guilty. Hmm, but guess what? When we stand before the righteous judge, we can't plead not guilty. Because guess what? He has all the evidence and he knows all the facts. And the thing about it is, Minister Mitch, why he's warning us to prepare ourselves, Minister Mitch, very important point I want to get across this morning, uh, glory to God, because Minister Mitch, our judge, the righteous judge, he has the power to pronounce the sentence of eternal doom. Oh, glory to God. Upon each and every one of us, who trampled his son under their feet. Minister Mitch, we talked about it this morning. Uh, glory to God in this the early morning service. Every human being will have to give an account. Glory to God. We bless the name of the Lord. You see, and I'm closing with this, and I'm going to continue with this tomorrow as we're on our journey to the cross. I'm closing with this, and just maybe Minister Mitch has something to say. The world tells us this, that we can be saved uh, by our, our good life, yeah, our good works, our generous gifts, all of that stuff. But I want to let somebody know this morning, this is not God's way of salvation. We must be prepared. You have to make that preparation now. Now is the time. Now is the day of salvation. Because guess what? 12 o'clock today, you might not be here. You might not have this opportunity. And I stop right here with this. Are you ready? Glory to God. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel. And because I will do unto thee, prepare to meet thy God. That's what it is this morning. Prepare to meet thy God. We bless the name of the Lord. We're going home this morning. Uh, yes, just a little bit more of this, and we will be saying the benediction. One of these days, the trumpet's going to sound. 
one of these days the eastern sky is going to split and I shall see the king of kings and the lord of lords anybody looking for that day yes that day is coming sorry it's coming Ah, uh, are you ready? Ah, uh, help us, Holy Ghost, to be like the five wise. Your coming is closer than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet. Ah, that trumpet sounds, yes. Ah, hallelujah, glory to God, yes. At the midnight cry, we, we are going home. We'll be going home. Ah, yes. Uh, yes, we're coming down. We thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, yes, this is the word of the Lord to us this morning. Very conscious uh, decision that you need to make. Yep, the signs are there. Everything is there. Everywhere, every single where, the signs are there. Ah, uh, yes, telling his son, go and get them, go get them, go get my children, go and get them. Ah, uh, yes, at the midnight, we are going home, we are going home. The bride of Christ, which is the church, yes. Church, get ready. Ah, uh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. The church plays an important role in the coming of the Lord. Glory to God, yes. And we got to be ready. We got to break up our holy grounds, yes. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God this morning. To meet him in the end. We bless him this morning. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. We give him thanks this morning and we give him praise. Minister Mitch, do you want to close us off with a benediction, woman of God? Uh, I thank God for you. Glory to God. You know, uh, this woman, she's a married woman. She has her husband. Yeah, some people might say, you know what? I ain't coming to my bed at 4 a.m. But let me tell you something. Uh, glory to God. Is there not a cause? Uh, glory to God. Uh, yes, we rise early, but Minister Mitch, I am determined. I will not rise early in the morning and stay up late and eat the bread of sorrow. No way. Uh, glory to God. Nope, I'm not doing it. I am determined, uh, glory to God, to go the last mile of the way. Uh, we bless the Lord. Yes, I will not work to hear. Depart from me. I know you not know. Uh, glory to God. This is a day of salvation. And if you are listening to us and you're not saved, uh, glory to God, and you're saying to yourself, well, you know, I have time. I am letting you know time is running out. Uh, glory to God. Yes, you don't know if the last breath is going to be required from your body. I'll uh, be blessed in the name of the Lord. Uh, yes, harden not your heart. Uh, the word of the Lord came to us this morning in our morning service. Behold, I stand at the door. I am knocking. Uh, glory to God. Minister Mitch, if I come to your house and I keep knocking, 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 I'm knocking all 31 days in a January. May I knock in a February. May I knock pretty soon. Uh, glory to God. I am just going to stop knocking because the longer I knock, the more hardened your heart becomes. Uh, glory to God. He is knocking King, uh, glory to God, open. He is willing to come in. Uh, Minister Mitch, I'm not preaching, but I want to encourage somebody. I want to encourage a backslider. I want to encourage somebody who you're not saved. Uh, yes, you're still drinking from the well of the world. Uh, you're still
still sitting at the table of the world. Uh, Jesus is saying, listen, open to me. I will come in. Uh, you don't have to clean up your house. You don't have to be get yourself cleaned up and dulled up. It's okay. Uh, open it anyways. I don't care if you're in the bed of adultery. Just let me in. I don't care if you're at the rum bar. I just want to get in. I don't care where you are. I just want to get in. Uh, glory to God. Yes, I desire. I have need of you. Uh, glory to God. So I just want to encourage somebody, let him in. He wants to dine with you. Uh, we bless the name of the Lord, glory to God. You don't have to have it all together, Minister Mitch. You don't have to be dotting your I's and crossing your T's. You don't have to do anything. I, I am, I'm the one that's going to do it. I'm the one that's going to restore. I'm the one that's going to redeem. I'm the one that is able to forgive you, uh, glory to God. So this morning, I pray that as a Holy Spirit right now is walking alongside Side you because we got to understand, Minister Mitchell, that the Holy Spirit plays a vital role in the life of a non believer. Uh, glory to God, and He walks alongside you and He's convicting you right now of that sin. Uh, glory to God, because without no conviction, there cannot be no repentance. Uh, glory oh, to God, yes, He's convicting you. He says, Come, come oh, unto yes, me. Yes. He's saying to somebody this morning, Come now, let us read and together Yes. No, your sin be a scarlet. Uh, yes, I know about that abortion. <coughs> uh, glory to God. <coughs> <coughs> I know, uh, yes, that you stole that money. I know that you lied. I know that you cheated, but come now. I want to reason with you. I want to have a little talk with you. Uh, yes, all you got to do is acknowledge I've already dealt uh, with the sin of that abortion. I've already dealt, uh, yes, with that lie, but I just want you uh, just to acknowledge uh, and repent and confess because I've already told you and assured you uh, as far as the east is from the west so far will I remove it I will put it in the sea of forgetfulness I bled and died for that sin I became that sin uh, yes that's what Jesus is saying to somebody this morning uh, yes the command and the warning prepare I am coming I am giving it a chance the opportunity uh, yes to set your house in order in the name of Jesus come on somebody because behold I am coming quickly. Uh, glory to God. It's a quick thing uh, in the name of Jesus. My God, this morning, somebody respond to the word of God. Respond. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the Lord this morning in this season. Glory to God. Go ahead, woman of God. I see that your little uh, prince has woken up. My husband is always. Go ahead. Yes, grace, mercy, and peace. Wherever you are around the world, remember that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. Whether you're in China, whether you're in Japan, Taiwan, Ukraine, Russia, think it's me, this. Whether you're in Jamaica, you're in the United States of America. You have the heart of a champion, the mind of an overcomer, the spirit of more than a conqueror. And remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are a lit candle. Go out and light your world. And the very most important thing, like we are telling you, it doesn't matter where you have been in sin. It doesn't matter the world you have walked in sin. It doesn't matter the words you have said in sin. There is someone who will still love you through yeah. that mock. There will be someone who will still love you even though you feel like you don't deserve that love. His name is Jesus. My and he God. is calling you to come home. He's calling you to draw nigh to him. So let us remember the text, John 3, 16, for yeah. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him Glory should not God. perish, but have everlasting life. The life that you choose today, it will repay you tomorrow. My God. Yes, glory to God. Again, we want to thank you for joining us. Glory to God. Again, good morning to the entire world. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you. Nothing lacking, nothing broken. Have yourself a wonderful day. Uh, glory to God. By his grace, we will see you, uh, yes, God willing, tomorrow at 530 as we rise and shine. Uh, glory to God for yet another day. Be blessed on today.